My calendar is broken. How else can you explain why it is almost the end of April already? It seems to be moving too fast from one day to the next. Welcome to the Garden Angelus, where we talk about flowers, veggies, and all the best dirt. I'm Dee Nash from Guthrie, Oklahoma, where I garden on seven and a half acres out in the country. And I'm Carol Michael from Indianapolis, Indiana. I have a suburban garden measured in square feet. It's less than a third of an acre. Didn't we decide that it is a third of an acre? Yes. On with the intro, D. <laughs> we call ourselves Garden Angelists because we are evangelists for gardening. We love gardening and we want you to love it too. Yes, we do. And we aren't afraid to spill the beans and tell all of our gardening secrets, the good, the bad, and even the ugly, and call each other out apparently. But that's <laughs> enough of who, what, when, and where. Let's move on to this week's episode. Hello, D. Hello, Carol. Are you having fun buying plants? I am having fun buying plants, and I can tell this is going to be one of those episodes. This episode is all basically ear candy for our listeners. Exactly. (laughs) So, uh, today is Monday. So, six days ago, we had a big snow event at my garden. Yeah. I don't know, an inch or more of snow, more than I've ever seen on April the 21st. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we had a big old, we had snow in Tulsa. We didn't have snow where I live, but it got cold. It got down to 30. I was wrong. You know what the good news is? Yes. What is it? I can't really find much damage out in the garden from that event. We have moved on, and I don't see any frost in the forecast through May 9th. So, fingers crossed, because I'm starting to buy some plants. Might be too early, but. It's not too early here. Um, Everything looks good now. Now we're in the 80s. That's true. So I have been to the greenhouse. I've only been um, I've only been three times since Friday, so that's not that much, is it? <laughs> well, I can't say anything because I've been twice. So, <laughs> and last week I went to Tulsa and I went to Bustani Plant Farm. So I can't say a word. That's true. And I did I did find Hardy Cyclamen D that I didn't know existed. Yeah, that's cool. How hardy are these things? Zone six, I think. So like right on the edge for my garden, but you know, the greenhouse owner, she saw them in a catalog, dry shade. She thought, hey, we should give them a try. So I bought one Friday. I bought another (laughs) one on Sunday and I bought another one. So I have three. I bought another one today. Okay, cool. I can't wait. I can't wait either. And you wrote a blog post about that, right? Yes, I wrote a blog post, and we'll put the big link to it so people can see that uh, what they are go insane. Other than that, you know, I've been I've been minding my I've been behaving sort of, kind of. What's going on in your garden? Oh, it's busy here. It was busy. It got down to thirty, but today's high is eighty. Hey, boo! Yeah, boo! I covered everything. The only thing I lost were a few tithonia, and um, I also lost uh, some coleus. But some of the coleus survived. So, and oh, the petunias came through it great. Speaking, so Bill and and Brennan built me a fence in the middle of our old asphalt drive. And I planted all of my tomatoes and smart pots and some peppers. And so it's a lot of prep work at first, but then there's no prep work at all. That's (laughs) amazing. And I mean, there's nothing after that. (laughs) You must do a blog post to show us pictures of that because. Okay, I will. The picture you showed me, I. Had a tiny bit of jealousy, but I don't have an old asphalt drive, so I don't really have a place to do that. Yeah, I, I kind of worried about us putting in this fence, and Bill goes, we all just sit on it like a patio anyway. And he goes, it'll look nice with tomatoes. And I was like, okay, I don't know who you are, but thank you. And then um, it'll be pretty carefree once we set up the drip irrigation, and then we will tie the plants onto the fence. And Very that's nice. how we're going to support them this year. All right, so now, because it's gotten hot... I'm in a big hurry to plant everything. And so the petunias came through fine. And speaking of petunia, what in the heck is going on, Carol? I've never seen so many pretty petunias in my life at the store. Oh, my gosh. They're gorgeous. And uh, you're tempted to buy all of them. And then I remind myself I'm not really a big petunia person. But I think I'm going to go back and get some petunias tomorrow because, you know, i got to go back to the greenhouse. Yeah, and I may end up going back and getting something too. But I I love Starry Sky. It came through the weather really well. It's a beautiful plant. And then today I found a dark purple and yellow variety called Headliner Dark Saturn. 
And so I was so excited about it that I went ahead and bought it. And I actually put that in my potage. Hopefully it'll trail over the edge. And then, so I have more petunias than I ever have and angel wing begonias. So I bought a few more of those too, because I'm insane. But they have so many new ones and some have double flowers and I can't stop myself. Oh my God, Dee, you've got, you've got some serious problems. You're going to have to go, you're going to have to go get counseling or just text me and I'll, I'll help you out as I can. I just text you to give you, um, to enable you. So shall we do our first quote? Well, before you do that, I want to tell you that the petunia that they gave me that they were all excited about, I think yes. I've identified it as uh, main stage glacier sky petunia. And it's very pretty. And they got some more of them. So I only have the one. And I thought, you know what? I should go back and get some more. Yeah, and put them in a container. Sure. Yeah. That's that's a great idea, Dee. Because, uh, <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about containers today. That's right. So let's do our <laughs> quote. And so I hold the smallest flower, some gracious thought may be, some message of the Father's love may hap to you or me. And that's from Welcome Talk About Flowers. Yes. M.D. Welcome, whoever she is, talks about flowers. I don't flowers. know who she is, but it's pretty. And I, if I could find that book, I would buy it. But that book does not exist except online. So, mm -hmm. isn't it the one we were talking about last week from the 1890s? It is. Mm -hmm. It is. And it's a sweet little book and it's very um, enticing. I wouldn't spend like $100 on it, but if I could find it for $20, i would probably go ahead and buy it. It's from like 1888, though. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you're going to find that one, but that's okay. I'm excited about it. I'm really excited about today's topic. Yes, we're going to talk about planting in containers and the old thriller filler spiller concept. Yes. And so should we explain that concept really quickly? Yeah. So you want a thriller, which is like a big, like, wow plant. And then around it, you put the, I'll put the supporting cast. Right. To sort of like point everybody towards the wow flower, but not to take away from it. And then the spillers are like uh, the crew that hangs on to the bottom of the pot to keep things sort of anchored and hide that edge. And They spill out of the pot. Right. That's the easiest way for me to think of it. So we decided we were going to each provide a recipe for a container that you said is 18 inches across. That's a big container. Yeah, almost all, and I was going to tell people, almost all of my containers are big containers, and there's a good reason for that. Because big containers hold the water. You don't have to yeah. water them like every hour, like the little ones. Right, because summer it's hot here and it's hot there too. And sometimes I still have to water twice a day if it's extremely hot, but this really does help. So you put in the notes that you went all retro this year. I don't know what that means. I but. did. Well, I went retro because I used um, some old-fashioned plants, like in my front containers, but I don't want to talk about them because it's kind of like what you're going to talk about with your memorial container. You want me to talk about that one first? Why don't you talk about that one first, and then I'll, I'll explain what I meant by retro. Or you can. The thing is, here's I'll tell people my conundrum. So I have five big pots on the patio. Mm -hmm. Four of them are planted with violas that look fabulous right now. And so I am loath to take out the violas and put in the summer annuals yet. Mm -hmm. But over at the greenhouse, people are buying stuff like crazed maniacs. So I'm having to buy my summer annuals. So I think what I'm going to do is instead of just dumping all those violas onto the compost pile, I'm going to plant them out or maybe get a couple of little planters to put them in temporarily. Mm-hmm. So, and the, the fifth container, I've got seedling sweet peas that are supposed to be good in containers, that little sweetheart. Yes. From botanical interest. And they're just, they're only about an inch tall. So it's like, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. <laughs> so I plant a memorial container for my dad. And so I imagine what he would have picked out. And so here's what's in there. Here's what's going to be in there. So I picked out some really dark red geraniums. In fact, they're called dark red. Mm -hmm. So not quite maroon, but really dark. My favorite color of geranium is dark red. Yes. And then I add some dark blue salvia, which is the tracks of um, hummingbirds. So it's mm -hmm. not 
is like black and blue, but it's not black and blue. And if I had had my wits about me, I would have got the label and brought it in here. It isn't Victoria, is it? No. No. It's one of the other ones. Okay. Yeah. And so I'll tell you what, it's a proven winner, and I will put a link in the show notes to that salvia because it looks very nice. Okay. Or I could just take off my headphones, run outside real quick and get it. (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) I think I'll just leave the link. And then I got one of those Angel Wing Dusty Millers. I think it's Sinotia. I got an Angel Wing to put in there. And uh, I think that's it. But I'll probably add a couple other things because I just keep poking things in there. So, and that's, like you said, that's a memorial planner for my dad. And I'll probably um, link to an article because just today, Modern Farmer on their newsletter had how to create a memorial garden to plant something in memory of somebody. And I thought that was really nice. So the other containers that I'm going to do, D, so this is going to sound like weird. I'm doing one kind of plant in each container. I'm not going to do like mixed up stuff. So if you do it that way, you can just group your containers together and you can also do thriller, filler, spiller that way too. I'm not saying you need to do that, but if one of our listeners wants to do that. So if they have a smaller pot, yes. you can just put the pots yeah. next to each other and have the same concept. Um, I think that isn't that weird. I, I tend to want to do mixed up pots. And the reason I said I was going retro I really was thinking about my pots on the front of my house. You know how I painted my front door black? Yeah. Well, I used black elephant ears because mine are in partial shade. Yep. Dark red geraniums. Yep. I put in, I think I put in some um, asparagus fern, but maybe not. A coleus, some wire vine. These are all plants that are like old fashioned. Right. And I love, I really love dark red geraniums. I like geraniums anyway, and when we talk about geraniums in this context, we're talking about pelargoniums. Um, and there's some good ones out there, and they've really improved on them. So, Which reminds me, in my memorial pot, here's another plant. I never could figure out why my dad planted it. Ageratum. It never did much. Mm-mm. And I don't even know if the greenhouse has any, but I might look for a little bit of blue. It would be kind of the um, filler. Yeah. And see what I can add in there. A little yeah. bit of blue. I'll be trying to think of some blue plants. They're, they're so much harder. Can you do lobelia up there? Oh, yeah. You could do blue lobelia. That'd be pretty too. Yeah, I could do that. Now I got to go back to the greenhouse tomorrow. Oh, darn. To okay, darn. so do you want to hear my recipe for my pots? Do we have you time? Gotta, yeah, let's do the recipe. Okay, so this is my pots in the back this year. You can either put a purple fountain grass or a canna. Preferably a purple canna or one that has a green leaf edged in purple. Or if you can find Tropicana cannas, those are really pretty too. So you use that as your thriller. And then you add three Gallardias, preferably Arizona Sun, because Arizona Sun is really pretty and it blooms a lot. And then use an orange sun coleus like Orange King or Sedona Sunset. And we'll link to these in our show notes as your filler. We will? Yes, Wait, we will. We will? We, you yes. better provide links because I don't I will. see links. I know. I'll make that happen. Man, she's messing with me because I messed with her. Okay, so then you finally can put in a lovely calibracoa, like Coral Sun Superbells, which I saw today at the nursery, and I, yes, brought them home, and they're from Proven Winners. Or you can use wire vine or both as your spillers. And so you can do that, or as a filler, you can also put in Agostiki. Agostiki really likes pots because, why, Carol? Why would Agostiki like pots? Because they are well-drained. And it likes well-drained, kind of dry soil. So it does really well in there. And almost all of this stuff that is blooming attracts hummingbirds. Yummy. Now the stuff that it, and I love hummingbirds, and so I always try to attract them to the garden. That sounds really, really nice. That's kind of what I did with all of my containers in the back. And I think it's also retro because of the canna. Canna's... You know, people do them sometimes, don't do them, but I love cannas in pots. I kind of feel like petunias, geraniums, cannas, those are all kind of retro, even though the petunias we had today, they're not your daddy's petunias, as I like to say, because no, they are so pretty. They're so pretty and they are um, self deadheading. What's the word for that? Self cleaning. Self cleaning. You don't have to deadhead them, they just keep blooming. Although sometimes around midsummer they benefit from a little bit of shearing back. Yeah, and they need fertilizer. 
midsummer because it just is hot and they've used themselves up. And that's another thing exactly. about your pots in Oklahoma, at least. If you have something that just poops out and can't perform anymore, replace it midsummer. It's okay. Well, that is if you can find stuff. I'm still yeah, haunted by the image stuff. of the greenhouse last June 1st when it was empty. Oh, that's because <laughs> everybody decided to start gardening. Exactly. And I, you know, was, I was over there this morning. It's a Monday and it, it was pretty busy, although I laughed and I shouldn't say this out loud, but I'm going to anyway. I said it was like the retired little old ladies hour at the, <laughs> <laughs> it's just like everybody looked older than me, but clearly retired and like waiting for the weekend crowds and trying to get ahead of the Mother's Day crowds. And the, So, you know, so let's so. reframe that and say that it was the smart ladies that are mature who are there because they know you can shop yes. in the morning and nobody's there. Exactly. So it was very nice. Oh my gosh. I saw some clay pots. I won over there too. And I accidentally bought an arbor over there the other day. <laughs> yeah. She, she sent me a picture of it. It's pretty. It is very pretty. I think she's going to need a something to climb on that arbor. Yeah. So yeah, it's like a, you know, one thing leads to another. And I do need to get out in the vegetable garden and weed. And my peppers and tomatoes are no way ready to go outside yet. But I might start taking them outside. Because, D, a week after that snow event, it's going to yeah. be in the 80s. Exactly. Tomorrow. So we've got to start. If you aren't going to go ahead and plant your tomatoes yet, which up north you shouldn't, go ahead and go start hardening off those plants. Because yeah. you've got to get them hardened off. If you didn't just buy them at the store, which I'm I'm for both. I do both. So you're going to do our next quote. Are we done talking about containers? Well, not really, but yeah, <laughs> done we could about- talk about containers a long time. Keep them watered, and you do you use drip irrigation. I just water them at night. Yeah, and then they do need they do benefit from some fertilizing because they are little captives in there. Yes, and we climb them full, and so there isn't much potting soil in there. So, oh, and I always get asked if I reuse my potting soil. Yes, I reuse part of it, but oh, I always add yes. a big fresh layer of new potting soil on top, and then I feed them with, usually I use a, an organic uh, foliar fertilizer about mm, just when things start to get pretty warm, and it's tiger bloom. That's the one I use. That's very nice. And the other thing is, if you get a combination and you're like, man, this pot is beautiful, take pictures of it, mm-hmm. like my sister did, and then she's like showing her, me, her phone at the greenhouse on Friday when I was helping her buy. I had to help her around too. And she's like, I, I need the stuff that was in this container last year. And I, you know, so we'd like, okay, that's this, this, and this. And so that's I'm running so cool. around getting stuff. We loaded her up with two big carts full of plants. That's cool. You know what I thought about your father's container, your memorial container? It's, uh-huh. a, it's a red, white, and blue container. It is. And so I may, I stick a flag in there for 4th of July. Mm-hmm. And you could do red. Bacopa as a spiller if you wanted to. And then I could. That'd be why also. Anyway, we're still going to talk about containers, but I'm going to let Carol do the quote since I jumped in on the last one. Never judge a potato by its skin. One day it will be French fries. <laughs> Ian Wilson. I don't know where you got that quote, D. I, I think that quote is so Dear funny. listeners, Carol does not take credit for that quote or, nor blame. <laughs> but <laughs> It's awesome, though. So this time we're going to talk about easy peasy potatoes in smart pots which is how i don't know do you grow all your potatoes this way i do well if i grow potatoes i am going to grow them in smart pots i think this year i'm going to use the smart pots for some other things i'm probably Mm -hmm. not going to grow potatoes but i will tell you that you know it's time to plant potatoes here it is here too pastime so I found a video, and this is a little gardener in England, and she has an allotment. She had a really nice tutorial on planting uh, potatoes in containers. Now, she uses those big plastic containers from nurseries. The truck. Twenty li- Yeah. Yeah, 20 liter, like Ooh. that you'd have a tree or something in. Right. So um, someone will have to do the conversion that, you know, big. Yeah, I do mine in the... It converts to American big. 20-gallon smart pot is what I use. Right. It's about the same, but she talks about, you know, the process of chitting your potatoes where you put them on a windowsill and then they'll get little sprouts on them. Yeah. And then once they're chitted, you want to make sure there's no more than about three chits per potato and then you, you plant them. And Dee, do you cover yours completely to the top from the get go or do you do that gradually? I've done it both ways. Um, 
This time, I'll be honest, I ran out of potting soil, so two of them I went ahead and went all the way to the top, and then the other one I just covered the potatoes, and I'll do it as they grow. Both ways work. I've never had trouble growing potatoes in smart pots. No, and so you can com- just cover them completely, and then you're done, and then just let them grow. And, you know, it's not an unattractive plant, and then towards the end of summer, the vines will start to die off, and then you'll... Basically, the way to harvest the potatoes is to dump the pot. So you'll Super never easy. spear it, <laughs> never spear it with a potato fork. And you, you know what's the best thing in summertime, D? Oh, I think I do, but you tell us. Okay, you get you a mess of green beans right out of your garden. Mm-hmm. You get you some new potatoes right out of your smart pot. And you could literally reach in there and grab some without harvesting the whole Yeah, thing. I just reach around the sides of the plants and just get whatever little... Because I don't grow full-size potatoes because I could care less about full-size potatoes. I want those exactly. little new potatoes because there's nothing that tastes like those. So you get the little new potatoes, you get your big mess of green beans, Mm -hmm. you add some bacon, you add some onion, you cook up that mess of beans, and that is what we call good eat. Yeah, it is. And then my grandmother used to take the littlest potatoes out of the green beans, and she'd fry them in just a little bit of bacon grease or oil, and it crisps up that skin. Oh my gosh, when I was a little kid, I ate those like crazy. Of course, she had- who wouldn't? She had rows and rows of potatoes, though. She had a big garden. That's true. But here's the thing, and you you touched on it. So if you're going to grow potatoes, forget growing a big Idaho baker. Boring. You want to grow those little, I'll call them gourmet potatoes. The the purple, the yellow, the mm-hmm. red, the brown, but the smaller mm-hmm. one, the red ones. Those are good potatoes to grow, and especially in these containers. Right. So that's my recommendation. German fingerlings are delicious, too, and they make a wonderful potato salad. <gasps> Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh, they're good. So I just grow the little potatoes because that's what I want. Just like I want to grow a little, you know, not super huge green beans. I just want to grow regular green beans and bush beans. Ooh, I can't wait. Which reminds me, I, w- I went to this restaurant eons ago, and they had the little German fingerling potatoes, mm-hmm. and they had um, just baked them just a little bit. And so then they served that with this delicious homemade ranch dressing. Ugh. Oh, my gosh. That sounds really that good. That was so good. Okay, so I'm I'm right. really hungry now. I got to go, D. I'm kind of hungry now. No, you have to stay. You have to stay for the next quote. Okay. To forget to dig the earth and to tend the soul is to forget ourselves. Mahatma Gandhi. And he was a gardener. He was. And so our mm-hmm. book on the bookshelf is The First Time Gardener's Guide, Growing Plants and Flowers by Sean and Allison McManus. And we know Sean and Allison, and this is their first book which uh, just came out this last couple of weeks. And so my copy, D, is in the other room, so I'm going to toss it over to you to talk about this. I want you to, yeah, okay, so they have a website, and they also have a podcast that is called Spoken Garden, and that's how we know them because we've met them in podcasting things. And they're a wonderful couple, a married couple, and... They're really fun on both their podcast and on their website and on Instagram because they play off of each other's strengths, and I really like that about both of them. So what I'm going to say about this book is it is a great book for somebody who's a beginning gardener. There's a lot of information in it. It's it's very similar to the other one we we reviewed before, which was the first time Gardener's Guide to Growing Vegetables, wasn't it? Yes, that was the one. Yeah, and so it's the same format as that book, and I just can't, I think it's a good book. I like the headings. I thought it was very well put together, and this one's on growing plants and flowers, so you, if you wanted to grow, want to branch out from growing vegetables, this would be a good place to start, and it just gives you all the basic information, um, but it's, I like how it's put together, so this is one of the best parts. It's on page 52. It's a, it looks like a placard that you would put on Instagram, and it says, Before you buy plants, remember to follow these steps. First, research information about each plant, including hardiness and climatic needs, based on right plant, right place. Then, two, group plants together by their needs, using right plant, right place. 
and it has ABCD. And then three, consider the size of a plant and maturity. I could have saved myself a lot of grief over the years, especially with trees. If I had put them, I have one in particular on the north side of my house that I should really cut down, but I'm not going to do it. All right, and so amend or change your garden soil if needed. I mean, that it's it's all put together like that. There are chapters that you can read in much more in depth, but I just love, I don't know, I just think the pictures are good. I think the information is really good. So, well, good. Well, it's in the other book. room. I have to go get it and look at it and then... Um, I have some nieces and nephews, you know, and they're still in the gardening era. They're kind of still new to the whole gardening thing. So this might be a good book for me to loan out to them to give them some tips and pointers. Or the, I think just, it's the perfect book. Yeah, mm-hmm. they can always text me. But then, you know, I give really simple answers and don't always explain why. Like why that's a bad tree choice. And this would help them understand why. Right. This explains it. Yeah. Make sure the Japanese maple that you choose on the north side of your house is not just cold hardy, but also doesn't grow to a mature size of 35 feet. There you go, Dee. Just saying. Very good advice. So that's dumb, dumb, dumb. The First Time Gardener's Guide, Growing Plants and Flowers by Sean and Allison McManus. And we'd like to congratulate them on their first book. Very nicely done. Yeah, congratulations, you guys. Yay. Yay. So let's move on to our dirt. And you came up with this. It's Citizen Science Month in April, and we barely have time to tell people about it before April is over. Yes, and also before our time together is over. So people can help contribute information to help science with scientists with observations. And you came up with a really good, one of the things you do is your rainfall. Yeah, so I have a very official rain gauge in my garden, and I go out and check it every day, check how much rain except if it doesn't rain, I just write zero. And then there's an app, and I go and record in the app, and then I am contributing to the database of information they have about the amounts of rainfall all across the country. So I think that's great. Um, You're going to do another app too, aren't you? Yes. So while I was researching how to be a citizen scientist, because, you know, that's I'm all about it, (laughs) there's... You know, we're having the big cicada. Brood X is coming out here in Indiana. Now, not so much in Oklahoma and Texas, but in Indiana, you know, when the news people are reporting about it and people are planting new trees and thinking, oh, my God, the cicadas are going to kill them. And they're talking in terms of millions of cicadas. I mean, it's going to get exciting. And so there are two apps. One's called Cicada Safari and one's from iNaturalist. And they want citizens to help them spot and find where all the cicadas are. So I downloaded Cicada Safari and actually sent it to my older sister, whose grandson is kind of like, with bugs. Right. And I said, hey, if you guys did this Cicada Safari thing, you could help him get less squeamish about seeing millions of cicadas. Yeah. And then you track them. You can take pictures. It's I'm all about it. I'm all excited. It is exciting. And so I help with um, Journey North. And they have a website, and you can track all kinds of things. But it started out tracking monarch butterflies, which I help with. And it is citizen scientists who helped figure out that there are six different um, groups of monarch butterflies, including what they call um, the super generation in Texas and Oklahoma. So if it hadn't been for citizen scientists, because there aren't any scientists in Oklahoma and Texas taking pictures of these butterflies that have a super huge wingspan, we would still not know about that super generation that flies down to Mexico. Cool. Which is really cool, right? But you can also track hummingbirds, which I don't do, but I should. Um, You can track, I want to say you can track like bluebirds, but I may have that wrong. There's a bunch of stuff you can track on the Journey North website. And people take it really seriously. And that reminds me, yesterday I saw an adult monarch butterfly in my garden flitting around. And I need to report that to Journey North. You do, so that they know. And um, I know with the hummingbirds, the birdseed store says around here, you're supposed to put your hummingbird feeder out if you do put a hummingbird feeder out. April 15th, when you do your get your taxes done, put your hummingbird feeder out. Uh, I just yeah. try to plant flowers for them. I don't try to do that. I don't either. I think it's good for them to have flowers, and so I do mostly flowers. All right, so what is your garden commission this week? So last week I talked about my special project. I'm going to be doing yes. it this week. 
So the bed beside my garage, it is east-facing. I have gotten nothing to grow there. I mean, I'm 20 bazillion, 24 years in this house. I still haven't, haven't licked that bed, so to speak. So the last thing to fail in there is some hydrangeas. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm pulling those out, and I've got Bath's Pink Dianthus, which is already growing there, and it kind of it has a little retaining wall, so it flows down over that. And then at your suggestion, I got Pow Wow Wildberry Coneflowers. Got five Love of those them. the other day at the greenhouse. Nice mm-hmm. hot pink. I'm going to put those in there. I'm going to... Uh, Dig the hardy orchid, hardy ground orchids out of the one bed. They look like crap anyway after the snow. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to move those in there, and everything that's pink is going to bloom in that thing. It's got some surprise lilies that will come up and bloom in the fall. So I'm planting all pink flowers over there, I hope it does well. Oh, I hope it does too. That will be really pretty. That's my really big plan. Pretty. That and everything else. <laughs> it's busy. Um, I can go on for hours. Oh, yeah, that'll be so cool. It's that time of year where everything is so busy. Um, I'm just going to keep on doing what I'm doing, which is planting, um, doing some weeding, and I'm going to mulch my beds this week uh, with pine bark, fine pine, the little pine bark. Um, I'm also adding some back to nature in places where we need some increased fertility or we have trouble with uh, clay because I have a little bit of clay, not very much, but a little bit. Um I, like I told one of my clients, one of my garden coaching clients, she wrote me today and she goes, where should I start first? Because I met with her on Friday. And I said, you know that book, Bird by Bird, which was written years ago about writing? Well, I by said, Anne this Lamont? is pl- by Anne Lamott. And it's one of my favorite books on writing. And basically you do it bird by bird. So in this case, you do it plant by plant. You just That's take right. it one little step at a time and you'll get it all done. Exactly. So, woo, that was a whirlwind, D. We want to thank everyone for listening to The Garden Angelus. If you like our podcast, please tell your friends about us. Also, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything. And if you listen to Apple Podcasts, we'd love a five-star review. That helps us get noticed by others. Could you also share our podcast with your friends? Word of mouth is still the best way to get the word out there. Yes, and be sure and check out links in our show notes for some of the things that we talked about plus links to our own websites. And if you want to help support us, use the affiliate links. If you purchase something after hitting an affiliate link, we earn a small commission and it costs you nothing. It was lovely to chat with all of you over the garden gate today. Bye until next week. Bye, everybody.